This is a biopsy from the uh, ankle. And this patient had a, kind of a plaque that was reddish purple and, um, and it's like a dark purple kind of color and irritated. And the dermatologist was worried that it might be a vascular tumor like Kaposi sarcoma or something like that. So let's try to work through this. Um, first of all, we have the epidermis is not normal, right? The epidermis starts to look kind of like acryl skin, but it's also got a really thick granular layer. So this has been scratched and irritated a lot. And there's also a lot of spongiosis. And remember, we can see spongiosis because it's white space in between the keratinocytes. That's fluid that's leaked up into the epidermis. And we can see usually in spongiosis is a good time to see the desmosomal spines of the keratinocytes. They get stretched out and they're like just holding on to their neighbor for dear life, like, like Rose and Jack in the Titanic. So one of the students once said that the, the desmosomal spines are saying, I'll never let go. So maybe it's a bad joke, but I thought it was really funny and that's how you know if you're a dermatopathologist. Beautiful, right? Beautiful spines. So those desmosomes are really strong. They can hold on to their neighbors uh, really tightly. So anyway, there's spongiosis. There's uh, um, that dense, uh, thick granular layer means that, that someone's been scratching at this. So it's kind of what we call lichenified. But the reason, the big reason that the dermatologist is seeing all this purple change and removing this is look at all these blood vessels in the dermis. Sorry, I'm trying to get in a focus here. I got distracted by those desmosomes. So here we go. The dermis is definitely abnormal. It, instead of just having collagen, it's loaded with blood vessels. And these blood vessels are well formed. They're, they, each one is a nice, a nice little round or oval lumen here and they've got a nice wall of endothelial cells and little pericytes around them. But there are so many, the wall of the vessels is thick. See, look at, look at how thick and the capillary is supposed to be really thin walled, but this little thing is about capillary or venule size, but it's very, very thickened and it's got a lot of collagen around the wall and they're like kind of tangled together here. But if you look from a little bit lower power, you can see that these vessels are making kind of a lobule. See, there are a bunch of little vessels, but they're all arranged into kind of one one area and then you can go over here and the same thing see this is like kind of a lobule of kind of a coiled up tangle of well-formed vessels same thing is sometimes you got to go uh, out a ways to see it same thing here here's kind of a lobule of vessels here's a lobule of vessels so that's useful that benign vascular things often grow with a lobular configuration now there's exceptions to those rules of course but but um a lot of times benign vessels either reactive or, um, or in uh, neoplasms will grow in these kind of lobular arrangements. So that's a helpful, a helpful thing, all right? And um, I don't see any infiltrating kind of um, uh, spindled endothelial cells or slit-like vascular spaces like I'd expect in Kaposi sarcoma, and we'll have to go over Kaposi some other time. But um, that's definitely an important consideration because Kaposi does occur in the setting of HIV, but also there's the kind of classic form that occurs usually on the distal extremities of older individuals. It's been typically described in Mediterranean, uh, people of Mediterranean origin or Ashkenazi Jews, but it's actually, I see it in old people from, from any type of ethnicity. And it's probably because the, as people get older, sometimes their immune system doesn't work as well. And if they've been exposed to HHV8, that reactivates the virus and then it lets um, them get Kaposi sarcoma and it has a tendency for the lower legs or the feet. So it's always good if you see a violaceous or erythematous lesion on the lower extremities, always think about capacity. But this is not capacity, this is something else. And so these vessels, again, they're very nicely formed, they're arranged in lobules. And in addition to, it's not just vessels that we have here, there's a lot of blood, right? And so the blood is leaking out of the vessels and we have evidence of that, not just because we're seeing red blood cells, but we're also seeing this golden refractile pigment. This is hemosiderin. So we're seeing a bleeding over a long term. These vessels are thick and proliferating. There's a lot of collagen and fibrosis in the background. There are all these little red blood cells leaking out of the vessels. And there's evidence of that because there's hemosiderin. So this has been going on for quite some time. And so what this is, is this is a very, very severe form of stasis dermatitis. So everyone over time, as we, as we age, gravity works against us and pushes back down on the blood that's trying to kind of come up from our legs back towards our heart. And the vessels get really tired of this over time and they begin to kind of proliferate and thicken from that extra back pressure. And we call that stasis change. So everyone gets some degree of tangled kind of coiled capillaries in, in their lower extremities. And the older you get, the more of it you get. And some people have really bad bad stasis, and this is an example of that. And when you get bad stasis that's so bad that it starts to make kind of a, a plaque or a violaceous area and begins to make all this kind of fibrosis and scarring and hemosiderin around it, 
um, we call this acroangiodermatitis as a fancy name for it. So usually how I sign it out in my report is severe vascular stasis and then in parentheses acroangiodermatitis. And this is kind of another term that people have used for this is kind of pseudo Kaposi sarcoma. It looks a lot clinically like Kaposi and microscopically it can really uh, mimic Kaposi sarcoma. If you have any doubt, you can do an HHV8 immunostain. Another thing you can do is you can do a vascular marker like ERG or CD31, and you can couple that with a uh, smooth muscle actin, and that what that will show you is the vascular marker shows you the endothelial cells, and it will give you this, uh, even though this is very busy and cellular, it will show you, oh, the vessels are actually all very nicely formed, and they're all surrounded by a nice little layer of pericytes, uh, which will be actin positive, and then the background spindle cells are mostly going to be fibroblasts and myofibroblasts, and they'll be mostly actin positive, and the spindle cells will be negative for the vascular markers, ERG or 31 or thir you know, uh, 34 is a little bit tricky because it can stain some normal dermal spindle cells. So, so um, that's helpful because at Kappa seeds, the, a lot of the spindle cells that are kind of infiltrating the dermis are not fibroblasts, but actually are endothelial cells that are spindled. So if you don't have an HHV8 on hand, using, a, using an endothelial marker and an actin will help. Now, I don't have those markers on this case because I recognize this on H&E. And a lot of times there's going to be a lot of spongiosis over top. And I find that for a lot of chronic uh, inflammatory um, and reactive conditions, of the lower legs, you'll often see spongiosis and eosinophils. And I think that this is because a lot of times these are, are very uncomfortable conditions. The patients will sometimes apply, you know, creams or, you know, oils or different things to try to relieve the symptoms. And then sometimes that will initiate a secondary contact dermatitis component on top of it. So I feel like a lot of times I see contact dermatitis superimposed on other things that are kind of uh, irritating and reactive um, or inflammatory on the lower extremities like the shins or the ankles. So this is a really nice example of just like the most extreme stasis dermatitis you can imagine. Just those vessels have been proliferating for a long time, but really nice. But it's good to remember that these can really mimic microscopically and clinically vas vascular uh, neoplasms. So don't make that mistake.